We begin with breaking news right now at 6. We are following two different shootings in Phoenix. The first one was a deadly shooting at a strip mall. Yeah, detectives say one person is dead. An innocent bystander was injured. We are told at this time, police are still looking for the suspect. Cristiana Ramos is live at the scene off of 19th Avenue in Bell Road. What are you seeing? What more can you tell us? Yeah, we're here at the 19th Police Center where one male and one female was shot. We did just receive new information from Phoenix Police. They said that a fight broke out right behind me outside of the Happy Hair Barber Shop. And you can see that that's blocked off. Several police crews are still here. It's a very active scene. During that fight, one male did pull out a gun. He shot one other male and a female unrelated to the incident. The suspect, he fled on foot away from the scene before police arrived. And right now there are two other people in police custody and one person with outstanding charges and they did also tell me that that woman that did get shot she was transported to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries so she should be okay and the male victim he was pronounced dead at the scene I did speak to the victim's family they told me that they dropped him off about an hour before the incident occurred and he was just a teenager this is a developing story so as we continue to get more confirmed information we'll keep you updated here on scene and on our Arizona family app live in Phoenix Cristiano Ramos for Arizona's family. All right, thank you so much for that. And uh, now to some other breaking news. A police shooting in Phoenix just off of 39th Avenue in Cactus Road. Yeah, so Alexis Dominguez just got to this scene. Another shooting here in Phoenix tonight. Alexis, what details do you have on this? Well, this is very much developing. What we know right now is that this is an officer involved shooting. It happened near 39th Avenue in Cactus. It also happened near a Phoenix police precinct, the Cactus precinct, to be more clear. At least four blocks uh, on 39th Avenue have been blocked off. The good news here is no officers were hurt and we are told the suspect is down. Now we are expected to get some new information just within the next couple of minutes. So of course we'll be sure to bring you that as soon as we get it. We do know there are no other outstanding people uh, that you know, may have had anything to do with the shooting. So that is the good news there. Of course, like I said, this is developing, so we'll be sure to bring you more as soon as we learn it. For now, reporting in Phoenix, Alexis Dominguez for Arizona's Family. All right, Alexis, thank you for that report. So parts of Flagstaff were flooding today after a flash flood warning was in parts of Coconino and Navajo counties. This is what it looked like on Highway 89. You see a lot of traffic buildup. That's because northbound lanes on 89 were shut down with water crossing over the road earlier today. The flooding also impacting. There were some power outages earlier. Some of that's starting to get resolved here at this point. So for people up in the North Country, wow. Really hoping uh, the rain goes away. They just cannot catch a break. It's just been no. the flooding up there mm -hmm. and just the issues. Yeah, we need the rain, but, you know, following a brutal wildfire season, it's yeah. it's a mixed bag. So, yeah, so the good news is the flash flood warnings for that area are over. 89 is back open, and here's a, a live look right now over the San Francisco peaks. A little bit of cloud cover, but, yeah, all is quiet, and temperatures have dropped off to a nice, cool 60 degrees right now. Doesn't that sound heavenly? All right, here's a look at the radar right now just to show you. It's all quiet in that area. It's still very active, though, all across the state with several flash flood warnings still in effect, including one for West Sedona. Big area here through Winslow, Holbrook, and up north of that. A lot of cloud to ground lightning. It is still a very active evening across parts of our state. The valley not included in that, though. We are really quiet, and I think we're going to stay that way for the next couple of hours. For your Saturday night plans, there's a live look outside. It's pretty humid right now. Dew points still in the 60s, making it feel sticky. Temperatures in the 90s, 93 right now in Phoenix, 91. Current temperature in Glendale, Scottsdale, and Gilbert, and 94 degrees in Tempe. So what's next for the rest of your evening hours? Again, I think it's going to stay quiet for tonight. Cloudy skies and temperatures in the 80s. But we do have a decent chance of rain as that tropical moisture heads back now toward Arizona. We'll time that out for you coming up in your first alert forecast. All right, April, looking forward to that. Thank you. One person is dead after a car crash in Queen Creek. This happened just after four this morning at Rittenhouse and Riggs Roads. Now, five teenagers were in the car when it crossed into opposite lanes of traffic, hitting a brick wall and electrical equipment. That equipment caught fire and it spread to the car. We know one person died. Another person is in critical condition. Investigators believe speed and impairment could be to blame for this crash. The driver is being charged with manslaughter and aggravated assault. 
And detectives are investigating a stabbing in Tempe. It happened just before 2 p.m. today at the Molino Suites Apartments on Baseline Road. Officers found a man who was stabbed. He was rushed to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Detectives say one person was arrested. We're working to get some more information on this investigation. Of course, we will update you as we learn more. Two people were killed in a murder-suicide in Phoenix overnight. Police tell us they found a man and woman dead inside their apartment near 23rd Avenue in Dunlap. Neighbors called police as soon as they started to hear gunshots. We learned the couple, 49-year-old Ian White and 42-year-old Tracy Thurman, were engaged. Witnesses tell police they heard the pair arguing before several shots were fired. They say the man was waving a gun on the balcony before he went back inside. That's when they heard another gunshot. Police say White later turned the gun on himself. Today is World Suicide Prevention Day. Suicide is the leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year olds. Experts say that people with mental health conditions like anxiety or depression are more vulnerable to suicide. So a new campaign just launched encouraging people to reach out for help. If you are struggling, you can now dial 988 to reach the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. The hotline itself is not new, but it recently got a new number. The Department of Health and Human Services reports more than 360,000 people called or texted the line in August. That's up more than 150,000 from just a year ago. Federal health officials are giving $35 million in grant money to Native Americans for their mental health. That funding would create a mental health hotline for Native American and Alaska Native tribes. So the goal here is to ensure that callers receive culturally sensitive support as well as the follow-up care if needed. Federal information shows that Native Americans and Alaska Natives are disproportionately impacted by suicide. So the deadline to apply for the grants is October 25th. Of course, tomorrow marks 21 years since terrorists attacked the World Trade Centers and Pentagon, killing nearly 3,000 people. There are events all weekend long to honor first responders and those who lost their lives in those attacks. Arizona's family went to the 9-11 Tower Challenge today in Glendale. Hundreds of first responders, family members, members of the military and their supporters climbed 2,071 stairs in honor of the first responders who lost their lives at the World Trade Center. There were 110 floors and 2,071 steps in each of the Twin Towers. Photographs of fallen heroes lined the stairs during the challenge, giving participants the opportunity to acknowledge those who made the ultimate sacrifice in service of others. All of the funds go to support the 100 Club of Arizona and being able to support our public safety right here in Arizona. Some of those who did the climb wore the weight of full firefighting gear. This event happens each year at Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale. And we know a lot of you want to figure out what can you go to this weekend to honor the victims of 9-11. There will be more events tomorrow. So at Tempe Beach Park, you can walk in the healing field or you can go to the candlelight vigil tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. There's nearly 3,000 flags for each person who died that day. There will also be speakers and a special ceremony. And if you can't make it tomorrow, we have more 9-11 events listed on our website. You can head to azfamily.com. Still to come tonight is the city of Phoenix dropping the ball when it comes to regulating short-term rentals. Well, an audit says city leaders and police could be doing a lot more to crack down on party houses. Welcome back. Right now, a new audit suggests that the city of Phoenix is struggling to regulate short-term rentals like Airbnb properties, from noise complaints to out-of-control house parties. It's all getting jammed up because they're not registered with the city. Yeah, so many officers don't really know how to flag them as problem properties. So Arizona's family spoke with one of the homeowners here who's been fighting with this for years. David Caltabiano reports. It seems to me, and I think most of us, glaringly slow when the problem is mushrooming 
it's, it's metastasizing at a phenomenal rate. That is Arizona Neighborhood Alliance Susan Edwards' interpretation of the city of Phoenix's audit on how officials are regulating short-term rentals under their ordinance. Among the findings, apartments need to better work together on the issue, and police needs to train their officers to issue citations for short-term rental violations. Why don't we have a task force like Scottsdale? A frustrating fact for the Phoenix resident. Why can't we be a leader? Why do we have to be a distant follower? Before Edwards was able to change the deed restrictions in her historic neighborhood, she was met with a short-term rental next door. The next thing we know is frat party city over there. She didn't expect her beloved neighborhood to feel like ASU. Next morning, I wake up and they're playing beer pong in the front yard so loudly I had to shut the windows. The city ordinance requires short-term rentals to be registered with the city or else face a fine. Since 2020, there are 1,504. Edwards says her organization, Arizona Neighborhood Alliance, found that number to be estimated much higher through various databases. Phoenix had 10,242 short-term rentals. The audit pulled five police reports on short-term rentals from seven Phoenix precincts. Of those 35 reports reviewed, only 24 calls about properties were not registered as short-term rentals. The report finds, due to a lack of training about the ordinance, officers did not refer the violations to another department. Lastly, the audit solution gives Phoenix police two years to train their officers on those citations. What does it take to get something done? It's, this is how many years? And, and it's just mushrooming. That's the terrifying part. It's just, this is a step, and, and I commend them for, for doing this, but also, if they would talk to us. That was David Coltsabiano reporting and throwing the Super Bowl coming to the Valley. Edwards and many others are worried that enforcement will be lacking once again with so many people staying in those short-term rentals. 11 major wildfires are burning in California this weekend. State agencies say nearly 75,000 firefighters are on the front lines. Yeah, and the brutal heat wave has been really fueling those wildfires. This year alone, wildfires have burned more than 272,000 acres in California. But there is some good news tonight. Tropical Storm K brought some relief and rain to parts of Southern California, breaking some rain records and helping fire crews there. The mosquito fire burning along Highway 50 is raising some concerns, though, when it comes to air quality there. Yeah, we've just been seems reporting like, on yeah. that for a while now and just mm -hmm. really a headache. And my parents, they're in Southern California. Mm -hmm. okay. Whenever I talk to them, they're like, yeah, we're heading to the coast just trying to escape. Oh, my goodness, uh, the that heat bad. There. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. Really, yeah. the smoke and the heat and just all of it. So, yeah, in Tropical Storm K has kind of fallen apart off the coast of Southern California and a little further south of there. But the rain continues to impact California and Arizona. We got quite a bit of a monsoon boost from that system. Here's a picture we just got in, just saw this posted on the first alert Facebook group on uh, on, uh, on Facebook. We'd love to have you part of it if you're not in that group yet. But Teresa Purdy said she's watching these storms to the northeast of Payson, wishing that they would come their way. Well, I got to tell you, they're not coming your way, but that is a really pretty view that you've got there. So here's Payson, and here's probably what she's seen. These storms up here to the north near Strawberry Pine, they're slowly weakening and drifting to the north. We've still got some decent storms near the Young area. Flash flood warnings, all of these areas here you see here that are highlighted in red. So a brand new one that is just popped up. Uh, this is in southern Gila County. This probably won't make it to pace and this is drifting up toward the northeast. We've got a flash flood warning now for this cell until 1015. All the rain that has dropped in this area and we now have a, th a severe thunderstorm warning uh, until as 645 for that area as well. Uh, now we look at a broader view here and we see we've still got the flash flood warnings for the Winslow and Holbrook area. A lot of cloud to ground lightning as these cells push up toward I-40 as well. It is quiet in Flagstaff but they got a lot of rain early today. For the valley right now, we are quiet and likely we're going to stay that way through tonight, but the remnants of K are going to eventually come our way. More on the timing of that in a moment. 93 degrees at this point in your Saturday evening. Winds are out of the northwest at 12 miles per hour, and although it is quiet, it is humid with a 63 degree dew point. The moisture, the clouds, it kept our temperatures down today. Our normal high this time of year is 102. We only made it to 95 this afternoon. Our morning low was below average as well at 74 degrees. Let's talk about what is next. So here's the remnants of K out here for tonight.
the rest of tonight. A few scattered showers in the high country, those should start to wind down. Now for tomorrow, we should be quiet across the state, across the state for the morning hours, but by the afternoon hours, those thunderstorms fire back up in the high country, and by the evening hours, we start to see storm chances back in your valley forecast, about 40 to 50 percent for your Sunday night, and about 50 percent throughout the day on Monday. That is when those remnants of K get kind of pulled back into the jet stream. They get pulled back through Arizona, and Monday looks like an active day across our state. Temperatures are going to be down. Storm chances are up Monday and into Monday night as well. We'll have a slight chance for some remaining moisture from K still on Tuesday, and really we're just going to kind of get back into a normal monsoon pattern after that. So for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, our storm chances will drop back off in the valley, but they'll continue for parts of the high country. Here's a seven-day rain outlook. It does show uh, some rain for the valley. That's good news. We can certainly use that, and it shouldn't come in the form of any kind of widespread flooding. We'll just get some scattered showers coming our way. Highs for tomorrow, 101 for Phoenix, 73 for Flag, and 83 for Pace, and 96 in Tucson. Your seven-day forecast shows we'll drop back to the double digits with those storm chances on Monday. We'll stay in the double digits on Tuesday with a 30% chance for storms. Then we dry it out on Wednesday. We're back in the triple digits from Thursday toward next weekend. Well, hope you're having a good Saturday so far. I'm Gina Maravilla. I want to talk to you about our weekend construction projects affecting our Valley freeways, and we'll start you out with the big closure of the weekend. It is related to the Broadway Curve project, so the I-10 westbound is closed from the 60 up to the State Route 143, so about a two-mile stretch. Uh, we expect this uh, stretch of freeway to reopen tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Also in this area, there will be a second closure. I-10 westbound, technically your northbound here. The ramp that gets you to the U.S. 60 eastbound will shut down early tomorrow morning starting at 4 a.m. will be closed all day tomorrow. We'll reopen Monday morning at 4 a.m. Want to take you to the Metro Center area. I-17 in both directions. The freeway is open, but it narrowed down to just two lanes between Dunlap and Peoria. We expect this restriction to be in place all weekend long until early Monday morning at 5. And then taking you way out west, the I-10 right where it meets the State Route 85. Both directions are open, but narrowed down to just one travel lane. And this restriction should be in place until tomorrow night at 9. From local emergencies to national disasters, we're paying it forward to a Valley vet or, uh, volunteer, I should say, who's always ready to help others in need. That's next. Welcome back. He is one of the people who comes to the aid of others as they face some of their darkest moments, and he does it for free. So in our latest Pay It Forward, Paul Horton introduces us to a volunteer who drops everything to help a stranger in crisis. We paid it forward to Michael Young, who's a hardworking volunteer for the American Red Cross. Michael's counted on to be ready at a moment's notice. So when we call Michael, he's out on the scene within two hours, you know, any day of the week, any time of the day. And so that includes in the middle of the night. So it's not uncommon for him to just jump, grab his go bag and, and head out and provide assistance to the clients that need it in their time of need. Michael has volunteered for the Red Cross since 2014. He's part of the disaster action team that helps people that may have had a house fire, flooding issues, or even in a wildfire area. Because of his dedication to helping others, the staff wanted to pay it forward to him. Michael, you were thinking you were here for something else. But yeah, I was. But in <laughs> honor of you, uh, we were watching the Pay It Forward segment that AZ Family does and immediately thought of you. And you are a beacon of light to our clients. You are a breath of fresh air to all of them. You come in their time of need. You're caring, compassionate. You represent everything about the American Red Cross in taking care of your community. So, in honor of that, we have some financial rewards for yes, your efforts. All right. So, this is for you. <laughs> I pay it forward. All the time. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Michael is a volunteer that works just as much as a full-time employee. He says there's no better feeling than you can help others. And usually by the time we finish and provide them with the kind of physical and financial support they need, at least to be off the streets, uh, they'll start crying, they'll want to give you a hug, uh, and that always brings the tears to me when they do that. You, you really are you're able to see the genuine appreciation they have for what the Red Cross does. Paul Horton for Arizona's Family. And if you want to nominate someone deserving in your life, you can head to our website, azfamily.com. Just click on the Pay It Forward tab. 
All right, still to come tonight on your news at 6.30, an Arizona judge blocks a new state law that prevents people from recording police officers. Plus, there's a piece of history right here in Phoenix, how a local library is connecting Arizona to the late Queen Elizabeth's royal coronation from 1952, plus some break two shootings in Phoenix. We'll have an update on both of those for you in just a few minutes. Just about 6.30 tonight, we are staying on top of some breaking news. Two shootings that happened in the Phoenix area this afternoon. The first one on the left side of your screen, 39th Avenue in Cactus. Phoenix police say one person was injured in a shooting that involved a police officer. We know no officers were injured. That incident is being investigated. Our crews are there on scene trying to get some more information. We know this is right by a police officer precinct there in that part of town. Yeah, and on the right side at 19th Avenue and Bell, there was a deadly shooting at a strip mall. Detectives say there was an argument between two men. One person is dead. An innocent bystander was also shot and injured. We're told they are in the hospital and are expected to be okay. Uh, but police at this time are still looking for the suspect. As soon as we get any more information, we will be sure to update you on those investigations. Now to this week in politics, get a live look at the Capitol tonight where Chief Justice John Roberts is defending the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. In his first public comments since that controversial move was made, Roberts said it's the court's job to interpret the Constitution. He says that it's a task that should not be left to the political branches or driven by public opinion. Justice Roberts says it was gut-wrenching to drive into a barricaded high court every morning and quote, simply because people disagree with opinions is not a basis for questioning the legitimacy of the court. The Supreme Court will be back in session less than a month from now and the justices will consider other divisive issues including immigration, affirmative action, voting rights and environmental regulations. And new at 6.30, the Anti-Defamation League is warning of extremist groups recruiting military and police veterans. The league found that more than 370 people currently serving in law enforcement have signed up for the far-right group, the Oath Keepers, and that number could be even higher. Ten members of the Oath Keepers have been criminally charged for rioting at the Capitol on January 6th. And the concern includes a range of other domestic extremist groups like the Proud Boys and the Three Percenters. Back here in Arizona, a federal judge in Phoenix just blocking a new state law that puts limitations on when and where the public can record police officers. The judge ruled that law banning any video within eight feet of law enforcement appears to violate the First Amendment. Those who back it say it protects police from harassment now it'll be up to state lawmakers to decide whether to keep defending it in court. And with two months until Election Day, new polling shows the race for U.S. Senate in Arizona is closer than ever. Republican Blake Masters taking on incumbent Democratic Senator Mark Kelly grabbed a few key uh, endorsements yesterday. Every living GOP governor from Arizona, including current Governor Doug Ducey and former Governor Jan Brewer, just endorsed Masters. Tomorrow on Politics Unplugged, Dennis speaks with Senator Mark Kelly about his run for re-election and his accomplishments so far in his first term. The senator will talk about what the Inflation Reduction Act means for Arizonans, including the ability to, or for Medicare to negotiate prices with pharmaceutical companies. And now we're able to do that, and because of that, we're going to cap the out-of-pocket expenses for seniors at $2,000 a year. And it'll be spread out over the years, so it's not going to be all up front. So if you're a senior, this is a really big deal. A senior on Medicare Part D is going to save a significant amount of money. We'll also talk with the state school's chief, Kathy Hoffman, about her run for re-election and the future of education here in Arizona. You can join Dennis Welch on Politics Unplugged tomorrow morning at 5.30 on CBS 5, then later in the day at 5 p.m. on 3TV.
a look outside. I have to say, mm -hmm. with the monsoon last night, dropping yeah. those temperatures last Ooh, night, it was so uh -huh. nice. Today, it wasn't too bad. No. Certainly welcome. You know, we'll take some days in the 90s for sure. It's been a little humid out there. Hey, we got some big storms going on in parts of northern Arizona. I was just scrolling through our First Alert Facebook group, and I want to share this picture with you here uh, from Judy Rainey. A little microburst with hail and thunder in Camp Verde just now. Let me make this a little bit bigger here so you can see uh, this great video that she shared. Yeah, look at that. The hail, it is coming down there, and you can see uh, with some decent rain as well. Thank you so much, Judy, for sharing that with us. I got one more to show you while we're here. How about this? It almost looks very spooky like this from Cody Carroll said, looking up from the Prescott Walmart. Yeah, that is kind of a spooky view there with the cloud cover. Let's uh, talk uh, now about the storms that are, we're seeing in that area. So let's head on over and take a look at the radar right now. And what we're seeing here uh, is uh, we do have some storms there popping up in the Prescott area, some cloud to ground lightning and some decent rain indicated here by these oranges and reds that moving toward the north. So perhaps if that holds together, Chino Valley, you'll be seeing some of that thunder, lightning, and heavy rain soon. Over in the Camp Verde area where we saw that first a microburst of video move through, or the thunderstorms at least that we saw move through, it's all quiet there now, but it is still active in parts of northern Arizona, particularly up near uh, Winslow and Holbrook where flash flood warnings continue at this hour. In the valley, we are quiet right now. Temperatures, if you're getting ready to head out maybe for some Saturday night plans, under mostly cloudy skies, 93 in downtown Phoenix, 90, mix of clouds and sun in Scottsdale. 91 in Chandler and low 90s in the Glendale area. Your Saturday night should be pretty quiet. We'll draw from the low 90s to the upper 80s. Warm but humid. We'll look ahead to your Sunday and the brand new week ahead of us too coming up. Oh, thank you, April. People across the globe are continuing to honor the life and legacy of Queen Elizabeth II. She passed away peacefully on Thursday at the age of 96. Charles III is officially the United King's new, uh, Kingdom's new monarch. But there will be a 10-day mourning period for the late queen. Her funeral will be held Monday, September 19th at Westminster Abbey. Now, thousands of people, as you've seen, have been lining up outside the royal castles to pay their respects. Today, members of the royal family met with some crowds near Windsor Castle. The two sons of King Charles have fallen out in recent years after Harry and Meghan gave up their royal titles to move to the United States. But a royal source says the showing of both princes and their wives in the same place is an important show of unity. Well, even though Queen Elizabeth II did not travel to the valley, there is a special piece of royal history in Phoenix. In the Burton Bar Library, there's a tapestry on display that was part of her coronation in 1952. Take a look. It's a phoenix. A Scottish artist behind the piece was the royal kingdom's weaver at the time. Margaret Bell, who is from Phoenix, was a part of the festivities and brought, bought it from him. That same year, she donated it to the library. Now it sits behind the library's front desk, honoring the queen in every way. The library says it has no plans to remove the Phoenix tapestry or take it anywhere else. It does give you pause when, you know, news like this comes. Um, it's such an impactful life lived on the whole world. Um, and then to know that we have something that is a direct connection to her and something that was so historically significant. We're honored to be able to be part of that here in the desert so far away from England. Yeah, really special. They say it is placed behind the desk so the light or dusk will not harm the material. Well, next time you head to the store, will you consider helping Arizona's family feed kids in need? All month, Safeway and Albertsons are taking donations at the register with a goal to raise $1 million. For more information, just head to our website, azfamily.com, or you can scan the QR code right there on your screen. You know, when I moved from Florida to Arizona, everyone said, mm -hmm. it's monsoon, we're not going to, you know, hurricanes, it's not really a thing. And all of a sudden, <laughs> boom, there's a hurricane. Yeah. It's been, uh, yeah. well, I feel like it's twofold because the temperatures, because of the monsoon, haven't been that bad this True. summer. True. But it definitely has felt more humid. Yes. Yep, that's kind of what we get. We kind of trade the heat for the humidity in monsoon season. And it, it's kind of normal for us to get a little monsoon boost uh, late when the monsoon's kind of winding down. That's when hurricane season starts to pick up and we get these little monsoons and boost and that's kind of what we've gotten here from K even storms like K who don't make a, a, a track that pushes it right toward Arizona come close
close enough to bring us some tropical moisture. It's felt particularly humid the last couple of days because of that, and it's going to continue to feel humid. Let's say if you're headed to the game tomorrow. Now, we know that's inside, but a lot of people might be tailgating out there, uh, out at uh, State Farm Stadium. So here's a look at the Cards tailgate forecast. 89 degrees at 10 a.m., uh, noon 95, and then 97 at 125. That's kickoff, mostly sunny, but again, humid. We do have some storm chances, and you'll notice those coming up in your seven-day forecast, but I'll tell you, they're not probably going to be early in the day for the valley. They'll be later by tomorrow evening. Uh, here's a look outside tonight. Isn't that beautiful with the sun getting ready to go down on your Saturday? It is 93 degrees right now with a 63 degree dew point. Again, feeling humid. Winds out of the northwest at 12 miles per hour. The flood watch is, uh, well, it's not lit up there. It is in effect, though, for Mojave County until midnight tonight. We still have a chance for rain across parts of the state for the next couple of days, and that's because the remnants from K are going to start to turn and move back through Arizona. So pumping all that moisture into Arizona the last couple of days, the storm's kind of fallen apart off the coast of Southern California, and finally the rain is easing up for parts of California. But boy, we had some flash flooding and quite a few boulders there on the road uh, there in the uh, I-8. I even saw on Twitter that uh, Caltrans was using the snow plows to get the boulders out of the way. So wild weather there. For Arizona, we've got some pretty deep storms, uh, deep moisture leading to the flash flood warnings that are still in effect for the next couple of hours for spots like Winslow and Holbrook. That's where we still got the rain coming down. Flash flood warning, although the severe thunderstorm warning has been allowed to expire for southern Gila County. These thunderstorms should wind down over the next couple of hours. By tomorrow afternoon, we're thinking they're going to pick back up. We'll get a stormy day in the high country for tomorrow. And for the valley, our best chance is going to be late in the day tomorrow evening. Pushing in here on our radar, we can see things pretty quiet right now for Flagstaff. High tomorrow, there's 73 degrees, 83 for Payson, 81 for Prescott, and 101 for the valley. That's for your Sunday. Then we're back to the double digits with a decent rain chance on Monday. That's when those remnants of K start to push back uh, east through Arizona. So 50% chance both during the day and during the evening time. Now Tuesday, our best chance of rain is going to be during the morning hours. Then we should be quiet, but much warmer by this time next weekend. Well, coming up next in sports, a wild college football Saturday. A couple top 10 teams were upset at home, plus the Cardinals getting ready to host the Chiefs in their season opener tomorrow. We're going to hear from the talented young QBs, Murray and Mahomes, coming up next in sports. Sports is sponsored by Lerner and Rowe, injury attorneys. We are less than 24 hours away from the Arizona Cardinals season opener. The Cards welcome the Kansas City Chiefs, and one of the most anticipated matchups will be between a couple young, talented QBs, Patrick Mahomes against Kyler Murray. There's a common thread tying together Kyler, Cliff, and Chiefs superstar Mahomes. Cliff coached Mahomes in college at Texas Tech. In high school, Murray was just a year behind Mahomes in the Texas high school football scene, and the Chiefs QB was well aware of Murray's skills, even at a young age. I've seen him since he was a sophomore or freshman in high school, just dominating the Dallas DFW area, really all of Texas in the country. Um, and so he's a winner. He's someone who's won everywhere he's been. I mean, they're the best of the best. You play the best of the best. I mean, that, that, that should bring the best out of you. But at the end of the day, like I said, I, I, like, I like where we're at. Um, I like who we got in this locker room. I like us. So uh, I'm confident. Yeah, I can't wait for that. That game kicks off at 125 on CBS 5. Meanwhile, the D-backs lost to the Rockies off of a walk-off homer last night, but they did show some fight, scoring nine runs in the fifth inning alone, headlined by Dalton Varsho's Grand Slam. I think we just did a really good job as a group of passing it on to the next person. Um, that's a tough game to lose. Um, when you do some really good things as a group, and, uh, you know, it's just a tough loss. Right now, ASU football on the road at 11th-ranked Oklahoma State. We'll have more on the Sun Devils later on tonight. But a few games already filled with surprises, starting with number one-ranked Alabama. Cutting it close with Texas, Longhorn's late field goal put them up 19-17 with a minute and a half left, though it gave Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young and the Tide way too much time for a comeback drive. Bama chipped in a 33-yard field goal to avoid the upset and wins by one. Despite Alabama's 15 penalties, out there. They were a little sloppy, but a couple top 10 teams were shocked at home. Number eight, Notre Dame fell to Marshall 26-21 and sixth ranked Texas A&M upset by Appalachian State 17-14. Well, turning to swimming into an art meeting, the champion synchronized swimmers that call the Valley their home. Here's our Nick King. Synchro Arizona, a synchronized swimming club based out of McDowell Mountain Ranch Aquatic Center, 
feeling pretty proud right now after one of its swimmers and a coach returned from last month's World Youth Championships with some shiny new medals. You know what synchronized swimming looks like. But to really comprehend the sport now technically known as artistic swimming, you have to dive in. It's basically dancing underwater. It combines the athleticism of swimming and the artistry of ballet, mixed with the acrobatics of gymnastics, especially if you're a top-notch flyer like Mona Schwickert. I like flipping and just getting thrown in the air is really fun. What's that feel like? Well, it's almost like a diving board, but it's not really springy. So you just jump and it's really fun, especially if it gets really high. 13-year-old Mona on a high right now after the youngest member of the U.S. national team earned a gold medal and two bronze medals at the 2022 FINA World Youth Artistic Swimming Championships. I think it's really cool, especially it's really detailed. It's just really nice just to look at them. The hardware, a product of training in the water seven hours a day for seven weeks leading up to the competition. With Scottsdale Synchro head coach Olivia Zhang serving as Team USA's head coach. She has a very tough mindset. Yeah. So I think that's uh, that played a huge role in the national team training. After getting a taste of representing her country, this underwater dancer now dreams of soaring even higher. I really want to represent Team USA in 2024 in the Olympics or in 2028. We're hoping that maybe by 2028, they represent the Team USA again to be on the podium. I have a great faith in her. In Scottsdale, Nick King. Three, two, one, two. For Arizona's family. What Only rooting cool for them. Sport. Yes, absolutely. I love it. Um, but we do have a score update from mm -hmm. Stillwater. Oklahoma State's up 17-10 over okay. ASU in the third. X Valade just scored one yard touchdown. So All right. okay. Bringing it closer, still got some yes. time. Also, um, I heard from sources Mark McClune doesn't have a voice after that Texas game earlier. <laughs> I know they were so <laughs> close to winning that. I can't believe it. Oh. All right. Brutal. Close game. Thanks, yeah. Julia. <laughs> All right, CBS 5 is your home for the Arizona Cardinals season opener tomorrow. Coverage from Glendale begins at 1 o'clock. After the game, you're going to want to keep it on CBS 5 for the Arizona's Family Post Game Show. That is tomorrow on CBS 5. Still ahead, a nice surprise for a girl with special needs. See the smile on her face when she receives a bike made especially for her. Hey, welcome back. Check this out. It was a special moment for a little Goodyear girl today. She received her very own bike made especially for her needs. Three-year-old Emberly has Lee's syndrome, a progressive disease that affects her mobility. So the nonprofit Help Hope Live donated this adaptive bike that is made especially for her special needs. Uh, they gave it to her at the Abilities Expo out at Westworld of Scottsdale. Her mom tells us it will give her a sense of normalcy. Um, it's really important just so she can feel like she can do things that other kids her age are able to do. Um, just because this disease kind of, it does take away a lot of their mobility that they won't be able to do a lot of the things that anyone else her age can do. Yeah, just look at her smile. Absolute <laughs> pure joy. Uh, really special moment for her. Hey, thanks so much for joining us on the News at 6. We'll see you back here later tonight for Arizona's Family News at 10.